This is the Bolezza Bologna and it may possibly be one of the best values found in an espresso machine today. It has stainless steel dual boilers, German engineering, programmable volumetrics, programmable simulated pre-infusion, full metal casing and design, external water tank, 58 millimeter portafilter, vibration pump, and a stylish compact design. It costs $2,000 Canadian or just more than $1,500 US and depending on when you're watching this video, it can be found on sale for a lot less. And today I want to share my honest thoughts with you. After using it daily for about six weeks, is this an espresso machine you should consider if in the market for a budget-friendly dual boiler espresso machine? What did I enjoy about the Bologna and what do I wish would be improved? And truthfully, should you consider this over a machine like the popular Breville dual boiler or similar competitors like the Lilith Elizabeth? Also, huge shout outs to iDrink Coffee Canada for shipping me this to share an honest review for this video. Relationships with vendors like iDrink Coffee enable truthful and honest reviews without any bias since the manufacturer is not involved in any single way and since my patreon isn't quite large enough to purchase products of this scale on a regular basis this is kind of the next best way to provide transparent reviews with all of you and as a vendor they want the truth for their customers so that you guys have the best products as well so before we dive into this let's brew a coffee And the coffee it creates is, I mean, delicious. And this is really gonna come down to more your grinder and the coffee that you use than a machine like this. But when paired with a good grinder and good coffee, this machine delivers. When it comes to the cup results, there's no issues here, for sure. But let's talk more about the overview of this machine and then thoughts I have with it. But let's, it might be a company you haven't heard about. So let me tell you about them real quick. They're, they're an espresso machine manufacturer owned by the VEA group, which also owns some other brands like Electra and Slingshot. Now, Beletza is based out of Germany, but builds their machines in China. This allows them to be able to design with great detail, but bring their labor costs down so that those savings can be reflected in the machine price. This is something we've seen in other large companies like Breville, Brazza, and even the Niche Zero. Now, the Bologna is a dual boiler espresso machine that uses stainless steel boilers measuring one liter for the steam boiler and 500 milliliters for the brew boiler. While smaller than some other larger dual boiler machines, these specs are honestly pretty great for home use and very similar, but actually slightly larger than Breville's 300 milliliter and 900 milliliters in the dual boiler. Now, the, speaking of the Breville, it uses a heat exchanger system from the steam boiler to help uh, basically heat up that brew boiler a little faster. This does not have that, but still 500 milliliters is more than enough to brew multiple shots a day and back to back shots for a few friends. But this is not enough to use in a commercial setting and quite honestly, strictly a home use machine. Now the brew boiler does use an integrated group design sitting above the group head to provide good or better temperature stability. This is actually something that some people desire over something like the E61, but that's more of a personal preference. Now the Bologna uses a vibration pump and this is totally fine, great for home use as it provides value, but you do lose that ability to plumb this machine in. So vibration pumps are great if you don't need that. They're slightly louder than the rotary alternatives, but they're also more costly cost effective. But thankfully the Blona is honestly fairly quiet. And for a vibration pump, it's very comparable to like my Breville Oracle or like dual boiler and volume emitted and overall sound quality. Nothing to be really worried about there. Now, since it uses a vibration pump, that means a water tank is necessary. I mean, most espresso machines have water tanks, but there is no plumbing option. And the Bologna has a unique method for ensuring it doesn't take up too much space. It has uh, an external water tank of 1.8 liters that you can place wherever you please. And I honestly think this is a great idea to be able to, you know, you can put your water tank over here. Oh, I want to put it over here or maybe behind the machine. It just allows you to be able to take up less space. It's a smaller machine. And the cool thing with this is a little bit modular too. This uses one eight inch uh, piping. So if you're able to get this at a local hardware store, in theory, you could extend this a little bit farther, hide it under a countertop. I actually really like that design rather than an integrated water tank, but this might be a personal thing and I know people won't agree. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Now on the front of this machine, you've got four backlit buttons to control uh, brewing. And I gotta say right off the bat, I do not love how they're backlit blue of all colors. Blue just, mm, even red would have been better, but preferably white just to keep this clean. Small critique, maybe you do like the blue, I personally don't, but 
regardless, it's not a big feature here. But the buttons themselves work pretty great. One is for hot water dispensing, two for volumetric programmable controls, and then one for manual brewing. Now the hot water button activates the brew boiler. Yeah, the brew boiler and not the typical steam boiler you'd find from a hot water dispenser on an espresso machine. Now this means that water can be almost optimal for brewing Americanos or even tea rather than the boiling water you'd normally find from espresso machines coming from the steam boiler. The downside here is that with a 500 milliliter brew boiler, it can mean waiting for the machine to warm back up if you want to pull a long black. So I'd personally recommend pulling a shot before dispensing hot water for the quickest workflow when making Americanos or, or similar beverages. You're gonna get more temperature stability in the shot, which is so much more important. And then your water can be slightly under temp if it's not quite heated up yet. Now we're gonna come back to these two buttons in a second, but the front fascia also features uh, this gauge right here, which is a manometer. And for me, this is amazing because it shows the live pressure at the group head. Now, for me, it's much preferred over the typical pump pressure or even steam pressure gauges found on espresso machines with only one single gauge as it provides way more useful information while pulling a shot. On the other side of this is the electronic interface that allows you to control the PID temperature of both the brew boiler and steam boiler. And this is also where you can adjust that programmable pre-infusion, which isn't necessarily true pre-infusion, but it's a nice feature to have. Now I say it's not true because it doesn't offer a low pressure of consistent water flow, but rather it turns the pump on and then turns it off for a programmable amount of time. Now for me, I had mine set for around five seconds, but if you do have this machine, play around with this to test the results. Now. I I do got a critique that this machine doesn't have an auto start feature and not a lot of machines at this price range do, but the Breville does. And that machine you can program to wake up every morning at a specific time. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a mechanical switch, so you can't even use a smart timer for this. It's got an electronic switch right here. Now that being said, warm up times are really incredible. I average about eight minutes from complete cold to being able to brew coffee. And I'd still recommend 12 to 15 to ensure the port filters up the temperature and the group heads up to the best optimal temperature to brew. But if if you're in a rush, eight minutes is kind of that sweet spot to be able to turn it on, go make some breakfast, get ready, and then be able to brew a coffee. So, so for you, this might not be a big deal, but if it is, you should be aware of that. Now on the right side is a larger steam lever, similar to what you see on like a Slayer espresso machine. It's very big arm to be able to actuate the steam. The big difference here is this is not a mechanical actuator, but an electronic switch. And honestly, it's a little disappointing because it doesn't give that same mechanical feel. It's got a slight one second delay, but the steam overall is very good and you'll be able to make silky smooth lattes, no problems there. You, you can practice your latte art on this machine to challenge Emily Bryant. And speaking of Emily Bryant, you're killing YouTube. You're doing an fantastic job. And if you're not following Emily yet, I'm gonna leave a link to her channel down below because she's fantastic. Keep up the great work. Now the time volumetric buttons work as you'd expect. You program how many seconds you want the machine to run before shutting off the pump. I much prefer the approach Breville is taking here with the truer volumetric approach where it measures how much water moves past a spinning sensor rather than by time, but it's still a nice feature to have for those who want ease of pushing one button each morning. But personally, I'd recommend using the manual switch on the far right if you want the ultimate control for the best coffee possible. Paired with the scale, you'll be brewing far more consistent espresso than you could with the timer and what it can do for you. Now in just a moment, we're going to talk about my overall thoughts on the Bologna and my experience that I've had as well as dissecting the parts inside this machine that help protect its longevity. But first I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which helps protect your identity, NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network provider. They're fully encrypted, don't track or keep logs, and have the fastest connection speeds on the market. Connect up to six devices from your computers, phones, or even Android TVs. Every one of your major platforms will be fully protected no matter where you are or what you're using as you browse, buy, or watch. Now I'm sure you've experienced this before where you're trying to watch one of your favorite shows, but it's region locked on one of your favorite streaming platforms. With NordVPN, and this isn't an issue as you can select a server from around the world to enjoy the content you want to watch when you want to watch it. I've been using NordVPN for a while now to ensure that I can watch region lock sports games, UK Netflix, and ensure security when doing online banking. Honestly, it's so easy to use and incredibly convenient. If you're interested, you can get two years of NordVPN at a discounted price plus one month free at nordvpn.com forward slash carousel or link down in the description where links always are. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, before diving into my overall thoughts, I think it's important to talk about the guts of a machine like this. Opening up the Bologna is honestly pretty easy. It's removing three screws on the top and two on the bottom. And opening up reveals insulated boilers, pump, circuit boards, and anything you really need to get at in case of repairs. Now, the pump is mounted on flexible rubbers right down here to reduce noise. Cables are zipped and fairly organized, at least 
and this upper area down here is a little different. Honestly, it's fairly simple. And even those who aren't handy, they you'll have a general understanding of how this machine works and operates. So without getting into the location of each part and critiquing the overall layout here, I think I'm fairly impressed with the internal layouts of the Bologna. It's definitely not perfect, but I find myself hard pressed to complain at this price point. Honestly, I'm fairly confident that if you ever needed to work on the Bologna for any reason, it'd be fairly simple. Now my only area of confusion here is the OPV. The OPV valve is something found on most espresso machines following the pump to uh, raise or lower the ceiling of max pressure. And, and so most machines allow you to adjust it, but this one has a rubber seal preventing you from adjusting the pressure. I haven't needed to adjust the pressure out of the box, so that's not an issue, but for those who want it as an option, it's not something that Belletza allows you to do, at least not with modifications or removing this rubber protection. So let's wrap this up. It was only a few years ago I found myself in a spot where I wanted a dual boiler for home while not breaking the bank, and my only options I had were the Breville dual boiler, which is incredibly popular now, but at the time on forums, it was incredibly critiqued for being unreliable and oh, have things have changed. Now, the other options were go to a single boiler or E61 heat exchanger, but today options like the Belletza Bologna would make the decision so much harder. The Bologna is a beautiful machine with great features, prosumer build quality, fair power, and overall a great experience. It's definitely not perfect. It lacks in programmability like auto start timers and true volumetrics like the Breville dual boiler, but in my experience, the Bologna has better steaming power, a smaller footprint, full stainless steel body and design. It's easily repairable and a standard port filter fork so that handles are interchangeable and readily available compared to the Breville counterpart. So ultimately, would I recommend the Bologna? Well, I believe if you prefer the tech of the Breville, don't care for prosumer build quality or would prefer modability, this may not be the machine for you. You might be better suited with that Breville dual boiler, but I think I think if you're looking for a dual boiler around 1500 US to $2,000 Canadian and prioritize aesthetics and design exterior build quality and want a prosumer build instead of an appliance style machine, but don't want to sacrifice the tech and quality uh, espresso features like time volumetrics, precise PAD control for the boiler and steam and programmable pre-infusion, the Bologna is a great machine. Honestly, I, it's been a little workhorse and I really, really like it. Heck, honestly, while I'm filming this, it's even on sale for $1,500 Canadian or just under $1,200 US. And at that price point, there really isn't anything that rivals this price with the features unless you're buying a used machine. Now, what do you think? Do you like the Bologna? Is this a machine you'll be considering or recommending to friends anytime soon? I'd truly love to know. If you enjoyed this video, before you go, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up down below. It truly helps more than you can imagine and that stuff really does matter and it would mean the world to me. Be sure to share this video with somebody who needs to know about the Bologna or somebody who's interested in espresso tech. Uh, that would also help out a ton. And if you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting the channel to be able to provide a budget for unbiased reviews, I'll leave a link down below. I give away the majority of my brew equipment to patrons in exchange. There's also access to a patron only discord. So if you want to meet some coffee loving friends, be sure to check that out down below. I love each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.